my friends. Been a while, hasn't it? I haven't done a paint along in quite a while, and I thought since we are at the 1st of October and spooky season is upon us, that maybe we should do a little pumpkin, something like this. These are really quick and easy to do. So I thought we would do something like that, and that would give you a little something to play with. You can do if you like them, you can do just one like that, or you could do a whole string of them or stack them on top of each other for a pumpkin statue, all kinds of things you could do. Um, this is a quick, easy little one, so it's not going to take a lot of supplies. I'm going to use my old ratty number eight round brush that I love so much. And I am going to use my Art Philosophy Co. Tropical set. Um, I'm going to use the orange out of this set. I'm going to use the red out of this set and I'm going to use two of the greens so that I get kind of a gradient on the pumpkin and then a little bit of a gradient on the stems. Now, are you ready for this? We're not going to draw these first. We're just going to wing it and do them kind of freehand. Okay. So I want to do this kind of in the middle of my paper. I don't have this paper taped down to anything because I'm not getting it just sopping wet and I'm not really going to put any water down first. I'm going to do wet on dry. So the wet will be in my brush, dry will be on the paper. And I'm going to zoom this back out just a little bit so that you can see my paint while I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm going to put this pumpkin right in the middle of this page, kind of like this one is, right? And to do that, I'm going to get some orange paint. So I'm just wetting my orange paint here and I'm just taking it straight out of the pan. I'm not going to dilute it at all first. And in the middle, I'm going to draw kind of a, a pointed oblong shape with my brush. So something like that and then fill it in. And then I'm going to grab just a little more paint and I'm going to come off this side at the top and I'm going to make like a half circle going around to the bottom. Kind of like that. And I'm going to come back and fill it in. And I'm not being too terribly careful with this. If, if my paint is not um, smooth and it's a little darker in some spots than others, that's perfectly okay because it gives the pumpkin a little bit of character. And I'm going to grab a little more paint and do kind of the same thing. I'm going to come right back off of it again. So I've essentially made my pointed oblong in the middle, a little half circle, and another little half circle. And then I'm going to do the same thing off the other side. Now, if it's easier to flip this over and do it upside down, certainly you can do that. So we'll do a little half circle off of that side. And another little half circle off of this side. Now, the one thing I do want you to notice, I'm gonna flip it back right side up, is that when I'm doing this, I'm taking my half circles up a little higher on the top than I am on the bottom. These are, the difference between the middle and the sides is not quite as exaggerated on the bottom as it is on the top because I want this pumpkin to be sitting flat on the ground. So I'm gonna come back over this with just a little bit of water and just make sure my whole area here is wet. Just a little tiny bit of water so you're not diluting the paint too terribly much. And just kind of swiping it around, make sure everything's wet. Now, I'm gonna use my red paint. So I'm gonna get a little bit of red. And I'm gonna teach you probably a really bad habit here. <laughs> um, I've got I'm just going straight into the pan on the red the same way, but I don't want a ton of red for this part. So I'm just going to blob some off on my paper here. And then I just have a little bit on my brush and I'm going to take just the point and kind of outline where that original pointed oblong is, was and where those half circles are. Now, because this is wet, That red paint is scattering and, and um, diffusing a little bit. So I'm going to come back to where I splopped it on my paper and just get a little bit more and do the same thing on the other side. And I'm not pressing really hard doing this. I'm just kind of letting the paint flow into the areas that are already wet. 
So I end up with something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to pause you for a second. I'm going to go hit this with the blow dryer. So if you're at this point, hit yours with the blow dryer as well, or let it sit for a minute and then come back to the video so that this can dry before we go into the next step. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm back. Um, my pumpkin is dry. So if you look at that, it might have looked a little bit scary when we were first putting that red on because remember that the watercolors are a whole lot brighter when they're wet than when they're dry. And so it might have looked like a whole lot of red going on there. But when it's dry, it fades out a little bit. And because we put it on top of the wet, it just kind of dispersed and diffused and softened it out a bit. So we end up with um, what looks like a pumpkin with the markings on it already. Okay. So we're going to do the stem and a couple of leaves. So I'm going to just grab one of my greens here. Just like I did the orange, I'm just going straight into the green with a wet, clean, wet brush. Um, if you want to dab some of it off, you can on paper, just like I did with the red. And I'm just going to draw a little stem coming out the top. And a couple of leaves coming off of that. And if you want to give that a little bit of dimension, you can get a darker green or mix your green with just a little bit of brown to make it a little darker and just kind of tap it Ooh, too much. Just kind of tap it at the very edges and let it bleed down in. Now I got too much on there so I rinsed my brush off and I'm coming back with just a clean wet brush and running it through that to lift some of that paint off and then I'm wiping it on my paper to get the paint off my brush so I can remove some of that. And I'm going to come back with just a little bit more across the top there, a little bit more there. Now don't worry that that stem doesn't have too much definition right at the moment because we are going to come back over the top of this when that's dry with a pen to add all the details in. Okay, so hit that with the dryer again real quick so that your stem is dry. I'm going to go do that. Okay, so we're back with dry pumpkin, dry stem. So for the next part, I'm going to take one of my Pigma Micron black pens. You can really do this with any black pen because we're going over the top of dry paint and um, I don't think we're going to put any other paint on top of it. So it doesn't necessarily need to be something like a Pigma, a Pigma Micron that's waterproof. You could do it with a Sharpie or a ballpoint gel pen, something like that. And we're going to come back in and just give this some definition now. So I'm, I'm essentially just going to outline my pumpkin. And if you're a little bit off on the outline, meaning... It's not exactly following the orange. That's okay. This is intended to be a little bit whimsical like most of the rest of the stuff we do. So if it's not exact, exact, that's okay. So I've done just the outline and this pen that I'm using is, it's kind of running out of ink and I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's, it's a little bit lighter in some spots than others and that's okay. That's part of the whimsical look. So I'm not really going to worry about that. Now I'm going to come back with that same pen and I'm going to follow the lines that I put in with the red that, um, that mark off my original pointed oval in the middle and the half circles. So I'm just going to come in and kind of follow that red line a little bit. And what you end up with when you do that is it looks like you know the pumpkins have the ridges in them because we're following where that red is there's a little bit of shading there so it gives it a little bit of a 3d look you get kind of some contour going in there okay so we've got the basics of our pumpkin done I'm gonna outline my stem the same way and my leaves so I'm giving them a little bit of definition I may have to get a new pen. I think this one's about to die. So there's a little bit of definition on my stem. 
and then I'm going to come in in the middle and just draw a face and you can make this face look like whatever you want it to look like. I did mine kind of as a traditional pumpkin and sometimes it's easiest to start with the nose in the middle because that just kind of gives you a placement marker and then come off the sides with the eyes. I'm just using triangles for mine. And then the mouth you can draw however you want to. I'm going to give him I'm going to give mine one little tooth in the middle and one little tooth right there and come back. Now, I'm going to get a little bit bigger pen I think because this one is starting to die. Um, I've got probably can't hear me when I walk away from the camera, can you? <laughs> I have got another Pigma Micron. It's a, a graphic pen. It's got a little bit wider tip on it. So I think I'm going to use that and I'm just going to color in the face shapes that I, that I drew in there. And these pens are nice because they go over watercolor really nicely. But again, it does not have to be a Pigma Micron. You can do this pretty much with any black pen that you have. Sharpies work. Black gel pens work, black markers, whatever you've got. So we're just going to go over that, color it in. Gives it a little bit of character once we've got it colored in. So there we go. Face is essentially done. Now at this point, we just need to add some little embellishments to it to, to kind of jazz it up and make it cute. Kind of the, the doodly whimsical things that I like to do. So one of the things that I like to do with this is add some curly cues coming off of the stem. Often pumpkins have those on them from the vine. So I'm just gonna start down here at the base of the stem and draw some little curlies coming up off of it and you can do as many of those as you want to and then I'm also along the bottom going to draw in a little bit of grass and that's really easy to do it's really just kind of a scribble so I'm going to start here in the middle and just almost um, you know like just start in the middle and zigzag back and forth to make the tufts of grass. And I'm making sure that I completely cover the bottom of my pumpkin so that it doesn't look like it's just kind of hanging out weird. And then just kind of scribble off to the side a little bit and do the same thing coming this way, making sure that you're getting the bottom of your pumpkin covered. And scribble off to the side a little bit. So that's what we end up with. And then from here, you can add any other little embellishments you want to add to it. If you want to add some doodles, um, maybe we'll do over here. We'll do a few lines like that. Yeah, so let me zoom you in so you can see this part a little bit better. We'll do a few little lines like that, and then maybe a few little lines like that. So he looks like he's got a little scar over there. And maybe we'll do that same thing down here across the bottom. So you can add to it from there whatever it is you want to add to it. And certainly you don't have to keep, um, you know, those doodles things that you add in the middle of the pumpkin itself. Um, maybe I want to put a little half moon coming off of it. Just because... I don't know, moons kind of go with Halloween, don't they? I think they do. So I'm going to give it a little moon sticking off the side of its head. If you wanted to give it more, you could put a star. Maybe another star. So 
So those look like they're kind of sticking out off of it. So you can add whatever other doodle embellishments you want to it to jazz it up. Or if you like it like that, leave it just like that. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, you could you could do just one like this. Um, you know, maybe make a little Halloween card or something with it like this. If you have a bigger piece of paper, do this same thing right next to it. So you have a couple of them in a row or stack them on top of each other. Each of them are going to be the same basic process. You can vary the sizes just by making your initial pointed oblong a different size. And then coming off of that, your half circles are going to be a different size. So there's all kinds of variations you can make on this, but it's a fairly quick, easy, simple pumpkin. Um, and he's pretty cute like that. But I'm going to turn the lights off for a second because I want to show you something. I got some neon paint from Jasper Stardust. And I will put, uh, I will put his website in the description. Um, and the neon paint had an orange in it. So when I did the sample one, I did it just like we just did this one. But before I put the black on it, I came back with a wash, which is just a really light coat of orange neon over the top. So my pumpkin has glow in the dark spots. <laughs> I have been absolutely enthralled with this neon paint since I got it. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. You can do all kinds of fun things with these, um, just depending on what type of paint you have. And the neons are fun because when you look at these two side by side, you really can't tell the difference. It's only when this one gets under black light that you notice that neon. So it's really kind of fun. So there you go. Quick little pumpkin for you. And if you give that a try, let me know how you do with it. If you have questions, absolutely message me here or on Instagram or on Facebook with your questions. I'm happy to answer those. And I'm going to try and do a couple more of these in October. So if there's something you specifically want to see a paint along for, um, put that in the comments as well. I think the, the next one we might try and do a bat, maybe. So if there's anything else you want to see, put it in the comments, let me know, and we'll do a paint along video for it. And like I said, if you try that, let me know how you do with it. I'd love to see them if you feel like sharing them and have a good day.